Hi, I'm Martin Scherer from Tesseract Restoration Studio and I have another restoration video for you today. Uh, it's a long one, so I've broken it into two parts. It's still two long parts. Um, this was a rather unusual uh, repair in a couple of respects and um, so I approached it with a different uh, mindset this time just to do something different and um, so there's a, an unusual aspect to this which I will address as soon as you start see, watching the video um, and um, unusual in that I'm trying to work around not completely taking the piece apart. In hindsight I would do that differently if this occasion arose again in the future. I'll address that uh, in more detail at the beginning of the uh, second part of this video. So it's two long parts. Uh, each one is an hour long. And um, also I wanted to mention that I have been placing a list of uh, links to tools and materials that I use. And you'll find that below in the description. So. Uh, without uh, further delay, let's get into this repair. Thanks. Well, here's another job we're getting ready to start. It's a Yadro, one of their larger models. And it's a horse and rider. And a um, good bit of breakage here. I think I have all the parts. Maybe a few little tiny shards missing, but I'm pretty sure I have most of the major parts to rebuild this. And um, I know I've done Yadros before, and I don't like to repeat myself. But uh, th there's something going on with this piece that uh, is slightly unusual, and I just thought would uh, I, it might make an interesting video just because of that aspect of it. So um, if you can zoom in on this area. Now, um, so this is a nice piece of leather in here. Um, it's flexible and it's worn and it looks like it's been around a while. It's the original material on this and I want to keep that whenever possible. Uh, in this case, this uh, leather is glued into the bit and into her fist. And that's, and in order to take that out, I would have to put some solvents in there and I, it's a good chance that I would wreck or um, mar this leather in a negative way and, and it would be a real difficult thing to try to match that leather and the feel and the look and everything. It's best to just leave it alone if I can and work around it. So therein lies the challenge on this piece. Uh, it's, not, it's not really extremely difficult, but it is challenging. In addition to that, we have, um, there's these brass bit pieces. It's, it's sort of like a, it's sort of a tack. Can you see that? And they're loose, so I don't want to lose those. I mean, that's glued. The leather is glued in there. It's not going anywhere. But I don't want to lose these. I'll put a dab of glue on that once I start. Just enough to hold it in place so we don't lose it. In the meantime, I don't want to have that fall out somewhere in my shop and I'll never find it again. I'm going to tape this just as a safety measure. So there's the challenge on this piece, is uh, to work around that uh, leather, not to get any, I mean, it's not that difficult as far as the rebuilding process, you know, you just keep the glue away from it, but once we start into the redecoration, it, you need to make sure, since I'm going to have to be working close to that area, to this, I'm going to have to sort of figure out a way to mask that while I um, 
bond this and fill it and paint it and work all around it without damaging that leather. So uh, it's a challenge. I'm sure I can rise to that challenge, but uh, I thought it might make an interesting video. So let's get started on this. So I'm going to do a rehearsal build on this before I start applying any adhesives. So. This is just so I can uh, figure out the sequence of reconstruction and also I will be seeing where their little tiny piece is missing and, and if there are any other uh, missing areas I need to deal with. Okay, well, I've found out that I am missing a significant portion of this, and uh, it's <laughs> further 
ups the challenge. So, I've taped, this is taped together, no bonding agent, no glue. So I put the, the head as much as what I have together. This is all missing material right here. Also, there's uh, a good size hole right here where this goes together. And all that empty space, uh, those are missing pieces. I don't have any of that. All right. Now, as you know, that's a mild inconvenience. I can relatively easily deal with. The rest of it is I got all these pieces put together. It's going to be challenging any way you look at it. So uh, the challenge I started with initially has been upped significantly. <laughs> so this could be a very interesting repair uh, just because of the uh, large quantity of missing pieces on this. And they're important pieces. They're, uh, all this has to line up just right and the face has to look natural. One of the ears is gone. That's another small detail that has to be worked out. So, uh, I got my work cut out for me on this piece. It's going to be a challenge. So, uh, the, next step, the next step will be to start bonding all this together. And I'll probably do it like I, you have it now. I'll bond this together, let that get good and dry, nice good alignment. And I can start working on this before I attach it. I'll fill in underneath the jaw here and some places. And then the same thing here. I will, I will assemble this head and reconstruct as much as possible of it uh, because I have a significant portion here. There's a huge gap right here, right here on this side. And so I can begin to fill that before I attach it. And so I'll have only a piece, yay big maybe, uh, to fill in. So anyway, um, we'll rebond this together and do as much work on it as we can. It'll be easier to work on off the piece. Get it rebuilt as much as possible um, before I bond these two together. And I'll probably, now that I know I can get my alignment correct here, I... Once I do that, I know I can work on this without the face attached while I work on, in this. It's going to be in my way if I, if I put it on first. I'll be able to get to all of this in here, uh, and, and I'll know that this will actually hook up like it's supposed to. Actually, I have to remember to do this where the reins don't... This has to go... through here instead of around here so I have to remember to do that when I bond that okay that's uh, we'll, we'll come back uh, when I begin to glue this all right so I need to uh, put a little dab of glue on here just to put this bit in place so I don't lose it it's just loose and we'll just tape it down and we'll just hold it in place all right here's a shot of the uh, Hickstall package I get it from this company it just happens to be where I got this pack particular batch I get it from other places I usually just look it up online Hickstall Nile 1 epoxy 60 gram kit and uh, look for the best price uh, for your area and availability I can tell you right now I get questions all the time about is there an alternative to this product I can't get it in my country the answer to that is I don't know <laughs> I have not been able to find anything even close to the equivalent of this every other kind of clear water clear epoxy will yellow on you except this and this is the only one I know of that will wick into cracks that you can't open on glass and uh, porcelain so anyway there it is 
this is just happens to be where I get it from. You don't have to get it there. Just look up this, these two lines here on, do a search online, you'll find it. So I have fresh Hixel mixed and I have my tape already cut and ready so I can grab it real quick and I'm just going to put a little bit of Hixel on this line. I don't want to get it too close to the edge of, to the ends because I don't want to have it squeeze out where another piece comes into this. So I'm put some tape on this. Q-tip and wipe off this bead of glue. And put some more tape on that. So now I'm going to glue in these I have these three pieces that make up the leg and I'm going to glue these two pieces in and leave this piece off for now because I'll, if I just have tape holding this together we got this a lot of weight here hanging out here and overnight this will stretch the tape and pull and I'll come in in the morning and it'll be glued semi apart. So to keep the strain off of these pieces I'm about to glue in we'll wait on this till tomorrow. So I'm going to glue these two pieces together and then I'll glue the whole section up in place. And again, I don't want to have too much squeeze out. I don't want to keep it away from the ends. I, now, I have to glue some shards together. Um, I almost threw these away. Yesterday I had all these weird looking pieces that, that look like the, the flanges of material on the inside of a, uh, a porcelain piece where they assemble it from multiple pieces then fire it again and you get these little flaky uh, what, what, uh, extra stuff on the inside and it breaks off sometimes inside and it rattles around and then when you, you drop it and everything breaks those things really break loose and then they're mixed up with your other stuff so I thought those were just expendable garbage thrown away shards and I was just sitting here playing with these pieces I have this ear from the horse that um, where it goes yesterday when I put this rehearsal assembly together. Uh, I had this ear and it is surrounded by air. There are no pieces that this can k butt up against and be bonded to this air space around it. And so I was thinking I'm gonna have to just fill that space in and rebuild this ear, sculpt this ear. I'd rather not if I don't have, if I can get away with it. So but I have this so I thought well I'll, if I can get it in there I've got three quarters of my ear already built and it's the right size and shape so anyway 
I was looking at these shards and I found that the, some of these actually go together on this piece. And so there, I'm hoping once I glue these on here that I'll be able to find out where they can attach to some edge that I have instead of being surrounded by air. Now, the problem is I have to glue these odd shaped things together that I can't put a clamp on. It's too delicate. If I try to clamp that, it's going to crack it. If I use a spring clamp, it's either going to break it or it's going to slide out of position when I put the pressure on it. So what do I do? Well, if I could hold it in place, I can let gravity do the work. Um, so I'm going to use a piece of modeling clay. This is a clay that never gets hard. And I'll press my shard into it. I'll do a test fit on this piece. And now that will just sit there and gravity will hold that together. So all I have to do is put a dot of glue in there. Hold it. And there it is locked together. And so so the surface tension of the glue will hold that together now. I'm going to get this squeeze out off of here. Because I have another piece that has to go on top of that. Another really odd looking shaped piece. But as you can see this Y shape there, those go together like that. So. <laughs> Sometimes this is all you can do in a day is get these pieces together because it's very important to get the, the, the alignment exact. If you don't, other pieces will not face up to it and you'll never get it together right. So, And this particular bonding agent requires zero space. Uh, it prefers zero space between the pieces works best that way so we'll come back tomorrow and put this other piece on here same process we'll just use gravity to hold it together and it's just a tedium of this type of assembly it just you have to be patient do a little bit at a time and you get really good results so a word about the um, modeling clay this is a very soft clay. It never gets hard. Uh, but you can't. I can't put this in the hot box. It'll melt. I'll come in here and it'll be a puddle of where the clay was. It'll just literally melt in in the uh, uh, hot box. If I take it out, it'll solidify again. But it will completely fail this mechanism I'm using as a hold as a holding mechanism. It will completely fail. So I can't put that in the hot box. So that. But if I leave it out overnight, it should be strong enough in the morning to glue my other piece in. I'll be able to handle this without it coming apart. But just be aware that if, if you use this method, you can't use the hot box. It'll melt. All the modeling clays work that way. There's based on some oil or wax that never hardens. And if you get that warm, it's just going to liquefy. So be aware of that and don't do it.
It's the next day, and uh, the glue I put on here yesterday is cured enough for me to add another piece to it. And so I'm just going to put a little dab of Hixel on here. that and we'll set that overnight it's a tedious process to doing this kind of thing but this is a, a bit of a special circumstance normally I would just fill around this but as I uh, discussed before that's not possible with this piece uh, and I'm just lucky I found all these pieces and I'm going to use them so, um, I actually found another piece to go on here too, and that's this piece right here. So that's four pieces that stack up to put in here. And I'll tell you the truth, I can't believe I even figured this out. And you see this little piece of gray right there? Can you see that? That is a bit of glaze near the the main so I know this piece actually reaches to the outside it's that that this is gonna go on here there there's also a little bit of gray on that one too so uh, these are vital pieces if I can use this and if I'm really lucky I'll be able to get that piece in there too but I don't feel confident about that it's just such a weird shape I don't see it fitting in here anywhere but I was wrong before, so well, once we get this to hold itself together. All right, I want to address this because I know I'm going to get questions about it. I've, I've been using this device uh, recently, and people are going to, where is it? What is it? Where can I get it? I, <laughs> I'm using it because uh, I would, where I would normally use a toothpick before, I'm using this now because a couple reasons. It's non-absorbent. And it's got a finer point uh, than the wooden uh, toothpick. But what it is, is these micro brushes. Um, th this package here is about 10 years old. And as you can see here, they got these tiny little brushes on the end. And these are getting old, and now the brushes are breaking off and they're kind of useless but I'll save these because they're that'll last me a lot longer than a toothpick and I can still throw it away I have more of these uh, newer ones uh, but but this is an old one and these these are handy things to have if you ever need to put a little spot of glue on something or some paint uh, even when the tips break off you can still use them for that which I've been doing here I've been putting little bits of uh, Hickstall on with these so I'll save this old pack I've got some new ones anyway I thought I'd point that out and because I know I'm gonna get questions about it all right this is from yesterday we put Hickstall on this and it's almost fully cured certainly enough for me to handle these without it coming apart so we'll take the tape off so um, I just want to show this I pulled my tape off and where you see this rough stuff on here this is the glue that was underneath the tape uh, and it dried there couldn't wipe it off because you had the tape on top of it so I've taken these uh, razor blades, I showed you how to make these, and I'm going to scrape that off with this, but I wanted to, you to see what it is I'm scraping off. A bit of that. 
So I like to scrape up. There's a there's a crack line right here. I like to scrape up to the crack from both sides. And that way you get all the glue. And as you can see, it's the razor blade stopping at the crack. We got really good alignment here, but there's a crack there, and it's slightly askew, and so it stops the razor blade. It doesn't stop it here, but it stops it here. And we have to fill this with milli putt anyway. But you want to try to get the alignment as good as possible. So now I'm going to go from the other side and I come right up to the line. And even when it's good alignment, the, the razor blade will, will drop into the crack and stop. So let me get all that off. It's just easier to clean it up now. That is extremely sharp. Too close to the end because this has to butt up to another piece later and I don't want to have a bead of squeeze out there that would prevent the pieces from fitting okay let's put this together Okay, so now I have to get this piece in, and I do a little test fit first. And what I'm looking for is how this mates up. I've got a good, clean mate up on this side, this side not so. There's some flaking around on that crack. So, but what I'm looking for here is where this crack ends so that I know where to start or stop with my Hickstall because I don't want it coming out, I don't want it squeezing out that end. So I'll have to stop right about there. Okay. Okay, so 
Now, that ear piece that I'm working on is going to go in here, roughly, right about here somewhere. But we've got a big void there around it. It's actually probably about this big when I put the rest of the face bone there. And again, there's another one down here too. So uh, this will sit overnight. Gain strength, get the glue to cure. Check my alignment. Uh, take the extra effort to get my alignment set. Okay, there's that. All right, so I've got to put the uh, remaining part of the leg on here, and so we'll take off the tape from yesterday. And now I'm scraping the Hickstall off that was underneath the tape. I need to tape this head down so it doesn't move. It's, there's so many places where the edges are really sharp and thin and I don't want to mess up the edges. And it's just too much to keep track of when I'm manipulating this piece. I can't have that flopping around. So, we will secure it. Now I like to, I don't like to tape completely around the crack where I can't see it because if it, for some reason, I like to, I'll, I'll, because I have this hanging out here with all this weight on this, I like to be able to see where my crack is right about here. Later, when this has been sitting a while, I want to make sure it hasn't slumped and stretched the tape and opened that crack up. So I can always pull the tape, pull the tape tighter, or put some more tape on it, or whatever I need to do. So I always like to leave a little bit of exposed area where the crack was. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'll put this on the shelf where I can see it easily, shine a flashlight on it, and look at it later. All right, now it's the next day, and this has uh, cured. And my intention was to put this piece in here today and put this piece in here and, and glue it into place. <laughs> I'm flopping all over the place. Um, and, but I was fooling around with this uh, doing my test fitting of this piece where it's going to go and I realized that if I had glued this on I wouldn't be able to get it together so so I'm gonna have to put this piece in first and then add this piece and then we'll add the glue to it uh, I'll have to put this in a hot box and heat it up all of it once it's assembled that'll warm everything up because once this is in place here I need to get the uh, Hickstall all around it and the only way to do that 
if I put it on here first, I'll get it all over me and this and everything else. So I'm going to put this into place and add the Hickstall afterward. And to do that, I need it to be hot. And that's going to make it wick into all the cracks. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this for now, and then we'll put some glue on it. All right, so I get to finesse this thing into here and wiggle it into place a certain way. Try not to break anything. Get this to come in there. It's a tricky maneuver. I, I tried it once and I was surprised that I got it together. And then I had to take it apart. So we could do this. It is got it in. Still pretty rough around there, but you can see where that lines up. So, and now this sliver goes in here. Now there's no way I would have gotten all that together if that piece was glued on there. And now this left side of the horse's face if this is alignment is good then this should line up not bad so there it is i've taken the tape off of this we glued this a few days ago so i what i'm going to do is put this in the hot box warm it up 15 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes. It's 150 degrees in there. That'll warm this up, and then I can put my Hickstall on this, and it'll wick down into all those cracks. I can set this into place, put some more Hickstall on these surfaces, and bond this into place. All right, I've just taken this out of the hot box. I'll put some still in here.
Okay, so there she is. That'll go in a hot box and uh, we'll cure that overnight. So I'm going to be using A plus B putty for the fills on this, for the um, structural rebuild where there's a lot of material missing. So this is the stuff. Um, I use it often. You see me refer to it in very many of my videos. That first. Okay, so I'm ready to start filling in these areas here. I don't have these pieces. I've got a very large missing area here. This whole area from here to here is missing. Uh, there's also an area underneath the chin. Um, so what I've done is I've taken masking tape and lined the inside of this. And the reason for that is so that I have something to back up my fingers with. So I won't be sticking <laughs> epoxy to my fingers. And if I try to pull my fingers out, the epoxy comes with it. So I'm doing this where I can get this fill in here. And it's not going to be pretty. The first round is just get it filled in. So I'm probably going to overfill it. And uh, basically get a good adhesion to my edges. And everything else will be stuck to that. So I want to work this in up against that edge. This is water on my tool. Help me smooth this. sticking to my tool. So I just wanted to show you just how little uh, of this is actually touching the base of the neck. And we only have a space between right here and right here where it's touching. And I can get an alignment from that if I know how, the, if I can get this to line up with the edges in there. So there's the orientation of how this is going to sit. So again, from the other side, you're looking at it now. From the other side and you can see there's still quite a bit of material missing on this side too so as i build up the missing material on the neck i will also be building up from the bottom down here and again we'll do it with the tape uh, technique i showed you yesterday so i'm going to take the tape off of what i did yesterday you need to be careful. This is razor sharp edges on these things. Okay. And so I'm not sure if this is going to be thick enough because this, this has bulged out a little bit. 
uh, last night. It might be when I file this down, it'll be too thin over here. So I'm going to add some more of this material to the back side, right? All right, so I'm going to put the uh, tape on this inside of this section. which I didn't show on the last part I worked on. Again, this is not structural, a structural reinforcement. It's just a barrier to keep the epoxy from sticking to my hand when I'm applying it. is close enough so now I can get my finger and it just fits right in there see while I work my material up against these edges that's important get good contact with all these edges that's where the strength comes from and the rest is just a fill all right um, we'll be back in a minute um, and start when I mix some epoxy for that so I'm going to be filling this in with my A plus B putty and I'm going to be working on this head separately from the rest of the uh, equestrian rider because it's a lot easier to work on this in my hand uh, especially when I get to working on this ear that I have to re-sculpt and, and so I'm not going to have the face on t the other side of the face of the horse on here until I'm ready to put the two pieces together but in the meantime I'm going to be working on this part and this uh, it's a lot and the ear I'll, it's a lot easier to have this in my hand because I can put it in any direction and turn it over and do all these things and it's a lot harder if this is attached to this great big horse and rider thing and I have to turn it over and sit it in angles I can work on this at angles that I couldn't do if it was attached to the larger object. So I'm going to be working on most as much of it as I can on here, filling all these cracks and the sculpting I have to do. Uh, it's just so much easier to work on here. And there will be a point when I get the face on here and I do have to do some filling this up, but it's way up here, away from the rider and all the hard to get to parts of this. So. I'll be doing as much work as possible off the unit. And for now, get back to her filling. And I'm forcing my epoxy up against the edges. Using water to smooth. I'm gonna keep the water away from this end of it because it can prevent the other, the next application of epoxy from sticking. So.
Okay, that's all we can do there today. All right, it's the next day, and um, I've filed this down a little bit. It's not completely shaped, but I got it, it a lot shaved down. And uh, But this is everything where you see gray. That was open space, and we filled it in and filed it down. I'm going to add a little bit to the inside here. And then here's the other side. This was all open space, and now it's filled and filed somewhat uh, roughly shaped. And while this is still off the rest of the figurine, I'm going to work on this ear and behind the ear and on the, along the neckline here. All this stuff on top where my finger is. <laughs> 